Hey guys, how's it going? This is gonna be, I guess, part two. Part one is already uh, up and loaded. This is gonna be a follow-up on the tractor that, uh, two tractors that we got from a neighbor who was giving them away, cleaning out his yard. They're kind of sitting out back and, uh, you know, derelict uh, mowers. And we're gonna try to bring them back to uh, operating use and getting them back into service. That's the plan anyway. So this is the first one of the two. The second one is more of a parts tractor, which, uh, it's gonna its life is gonna be saved for other tractors but this one is complete enough where it should be okay and if we need to rob anything we can rob it off of that one it's running a twin cylinder briggs engine a uh on the first video the starter was frozen it had mouse nests in it and you know all that kind of stuff got it up and running runs decent doesn't idle the fuel is i don't know how old the battery it's on a battery charger it seemed like it has uh recouped it's only a year old judging by the date and once you get the shifter plate is flopping around down in there the tires i aired up they seem like they are staying we should go check right now they got some cracking in them but uh as long as they hold air should be good enough it seems to be fine let's see if the safeties work before it wasn't cranking with the key as if it'll go yeah so we have an issue with that guy we're not getting any uh power to the starter last time i jumped the starter with a jumper pack so let's go look into that i should probably get the ultrasonic cleaner heated up because we're probably going to pull that carburetor and get into that and uh, let's see if we can resurrect this guy shall we i think the first thing we should do is get this hood out of our way and the craftsman ones are fairly easy they just have a quick connect plug on them and if you ratchet it in the right location, it'll lift straight up and out of the way. There you go. Kind of like a uh, tailgate. That gives a little bit more room. Air cleaner is already just sitting on there for when it got pressure washed. And I think we should maybe work on getting it to crank from the key first. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, electrical troubleshooting. There is a key switch there is a safety on the seat there is a safety on the uh, mower deck engage and there's also safety on the pedal could be one of those three or it could just be the starter uh, relay solenoid that is mounted right here so let me go get a test light see if we can figure it out i just like a regular test light it's just what i grew up with and i used to i know they got power power probes out there now but maybe someday so the first thing i'm going to do is go check and make sure the battery's got juice in it which it does. And then I'm also going to go check and make sure that that power is making it to other locations. So the first thing is I'm checking at the battery I have ground, but do I have ground at the chassis itself? I do. I want to make sure I have 12 volts coming out. Uh, more than just the stud here, is it making it past the stud to the wire? In other words, I'm looking for a bad connection across here and I do. So I know that connection's good. That connection's good. So back in there, that's going to be hard to see, but that's going to be the starter solenoid. Hopefully it's focusing on that. And what you have is, this is power coming directly from the battery to the solenoid. This is would be power going out to the starter. A wire runs right to here. Power to the starter. And then it has two more terminals up top. You see this side and this side. I'm not positive of this, but I'm pretty sure this is how it works. It's going to get a 12 volt signal coming from the key switch on this side and then on ground on the other side if it has both of those items it will pull the solenoid in and make contact between these two well the safeties are on this side on the ground side so this wire has a path that it runs to you actually kind of see it going down to one switch right now that's the one i believe for the mower deck hopefully that's showing up that guy right there is for the mower deck um be one for the pedal and there'll be one for the seat each one of those is kind of like an interlock and it stops the path to ground so it can't crank uh, actually the seat could be different uh, i'm not positive some of it will kill the mower deck and kill the tractor like so if you get to get off the tractor when the mower deck is running it will also shut the machine down but again we're just trying to work with the uh crank part of it so what i'm gonna do 
It's the first time when my flashlight went. So what I'm going to do for now is that post, that post right there on the left, I'm going to go and see if uh, I get 12 volts when I turn the key on that lug. And if I do, then we're going to go check for ground on the other side. Could be either one of those signals are not getting there or the solenoid itself is just no good. So let's go find out. All right, I have the test light. Doesn't matter which direction you put the, the test light, you know, this doesn't have to be positive or the clip on plug have to be negative. You can swap them around. It's still gonna like the light up no matter what. So the other end of this wire is attached to where I believe 12 volts should be coming on when the key switch is on and the other half is tied to the battery. So when we crank it with the key, that should be lighting up and it's not. So that's telling me I'm not getting 12 volts to the uh, solenoid itself. Uh, just to kind of make sure that that is what's happening, I'm now going to get a little jumper wire and I'm going to go run it up to the, to the hot and touch the hot and we'll see if that solenoid decides to fire. Alright, so I swapped the test light to the other plug and I'm just going to show again. So the test light on the right there, that wire, is now on what should be the grounded circuit. So if I take this test light and I go to the battery, I am getting grounded signal, right? Agree? Then there's the other wire I have on the other end. Now, rightfully, if I should put 12 volts on this, this should uh, put power to the starter. It's drawn, but it is not putting anything to the starter. So I am gonna switch the test light over and clean up onto the starter. Now we had a, start, a problem with this starter already, so we are gonna go look and do the same thing and, and arc that and see if we get power to that test light. Nope, no power going to that. So because it's drawing a lot of current you see when I'm arcing on there, I am suspecting one of the problems at least is probably the relay itself. Um, the coil draws, but it does not pull the relay in to have power continue on down to the starter. So I'm gonna think that's one problem. It may have more because I, I don't think we still have a signal kind of going to that switch. So let's get this taken care of. We're gonna get it, the switch up and out of here, maybe kind of look at it a little bit better. That should be a little bit easier to see again. Uh, which way was it? This should be power coming from the switch, I think. I'm not positive of that. This should be the grounds from the uh, safety switches. The ignition switch, safety switches. Power comes from the battery, gets relay, uh, latched, and then it goes out to the starter. So this is hooked up to ground. We have power coming down from the battery. Nothing going out. Nothing on that tab, nothing on that tab. Now I'm gonna switch it over to the negative side. All right, so now this should show wherever there's, there's ground. Ground on that side and ground on that side. So that's wacky. Let's unhook some stuff. I'll get a better idea. Okay, so that one is open. That one is ground. So that might be the ground and that might be the hot. Either way, so this is 12 volts. I should be able to latch. And what do we have for ground? This one's ground? Yeah, that one's ground. Let's go put that one back on. You work for a second. Tried to work. I'm trying to unconfuse myself. All right, now my test light is back to working normal. I don't have power to that wire. Let's go. There we go. We need a better, better something to attach to. Right. 
so a little latch. So I had those two backwards. And we want to see if we get it even. So the relay is no good because right now it should be passing power down through the starter. In other words, when I, when I'm doing, <laughs> come on, stop it. When I am doing that, that test light should be lighting up and it's not. So that relay is no good. I did have it backwards as far as which one was which. But let's see if this wire, I'm hooked up to the ground, and I need to see 12 volts coming down on this when I crank the key. Nothing. So that is still a problem too. We're still not getting a signal from the key switch to fire the solenoid also. I did put a bypass in the seat The seat wire does have a jumper in it just to eliminate that out of the picture. I have a feeling the seat is not on crank though. I think it's just the mower deck and the pedal. I'm not positive of that though. And the one off the other tractor. And what is inside here, essentially it's just a, a contact block on the ends of these two studs. There's a, a set of contacts, look like you know contacts on points. And then there's another set that lifts up and touches those two and it makes a path that gets corrected, uh, connected. And down here is a coil, is a wound up coil that when you energize the coil, uh, draws those two together. And so we got it, so it clicks, but inside there, those points are dirty and it's not making the path to continue on. Nothing saying that this one's any good neither, but we're gonna go put this one on and we'll give it a shot. So I took it off. And uh, I wanted to take a second and clean up the terminals with a wire wheel. Wire wheel. And then I looked back at the two switches and I don't remember which one's which. <laughs> Alright, pretty sure I got the right switch on there. And this is 12 volts. If we put 12 to that, it should crank. There we go. So, that part is fixed. Now we got to get signal coming to this wire when we turn the key. So let's go look into that guy. One thing it does have is a fuse on the system. And you'll see this 30 amp fuse right here. It's on a holder right behind the uh, starter solenoid. And uh, with the kind of spade fuses, you can probe the back of them and see if you got power. And it looks like we have power going across. So the fuse is not blown. Nothing saying the uh, back side is making contact. Maybe we can squeeze in there. Okay. Okay, so I believe that is power going to the switch. Again, I'm not positive of that, but I think that's how it works. So uh, let's go look into the ignition switch. Right, judging by the back of that switch, you can definitely see how the mother nature has taken its toll on that guy. So I'm probably suspecting that it's gonna be the switch itself. Let's go pull that plug down and see what's under the back side of it, if we can. I might put you guys in a stand. There we go. We could probably probe that and make sure that power is coming up to here. But I have a feeling that switch and the corrosion that is on it is just done. <laughs> Especially that rusty lug right there, you know. Hey, right, so the test light is still on the ground lug. Make sure our light is working. Yeah. Let's go see if we could find that rusty one has power. So power is making it up to the switch. I don't know. That guy looks pretty nasty though. Let's pop that ignition switch right out. Generally a rubber boot that's on it. Yeah, I got to get a screwdriver. Yeah, off. I think I'll just have a nut that holds it to the uh, to the dash and we can pull the whole thing out. And hopefully the one on the other tractor is good. You 
know it's bad. <laughs> I mean, a plastic nut doesn't want to come off, I guess. So it can't rust, it's only plastic. Right, now we can see that switch a little better. That's what we got. Uh, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to go take this over to wire wheel. We're going to go clean that up and clean that, that input terminal up and plug it back in and see if it'll do anything. I warn you, wind and noise alert. It's pretty burnt down in there too. Let's go put that guy back in. It's got one by itself and then the the six pack. That guy. That guy. Yeah, still nothing. We could probably probe it and see. And again, it could be a safety issue too, but Judging by the looks of that switch, I'm suspecting that. I'm going to go grab the other one out of the tractor too. Parts tractor. So unfortunately, the other tractor had a different style switch. And I checked my stash. I do not have one. So what we have is this red wire is the power coming in, right? You agree with that? And then this white wire is the same white wire that runs down to the solenoid. Needs to see 12 volts on it. So when you crank the key, we should be getting. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> this wasn't working a second ago. All right, so that uh, <laughs> has cured itself. So we are good to the switch. We are going to definitely want to clean up these contacts much better, though. And same thing inside here. There's basically just points that rub across each other, and sometimes, you know, just kind of fondling for a while it breaks the scum that's off the uh, outside of them we're gonna go put that together i was just gonna go buy uh, a new switch we still may have to it may be uh, giving us some issues but it should be good enough for now all right so i went and i took a break and went to lunch and i figured what we got to do is repair that plug that's in there i think the rust is just so much that is causing an issue and hopefully we could push the little tab that is in it down. I think we can get it out of the back. There we go. And uh, I am going to take a little bit of time and clean that guy up. And look at the other ones. Actually, the other ones don't look too bad. I'm probably just going to put some grease, pack them with grease to stop them from corroding. And then we'll do the same with the switch. We'll give her one last clean up on like that side and put it back together. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Stop shaking. That's a little better. And that's a little better. Go pack that with grease and we'll put it back together. There you go, that back together. We should be able to put a little fuel and hopefully fires right up. Good, so that means all our safeties are working. None of that stuff is an issue. Uh, what do you want to get into next? We should probably pop the top of that carburetor off, take a look inside, and see if there's any heebie-jeebies. Let's go pop the top on that sucker. I took an air gun and kind of blew off around it before I uh, did this to try to keep the crap out of it. And the choke is already disconnected. Go whack it with something. Hello. Trying to save the gasket. Take a little screwdriver, 
somewhere. I want to walk that seal, that gasket off of there without cracking it. I gotta get a screwdriver. I think I need a longer screwdriver. Not too bad. A little bit of dirt in there, though. A little, a little bit of water. Let me zoom you back out and we'll go over the top of it. Wrong one. How's that sound? That's one thing this camera does not like doing. So. What do we have over there? Yeah, there's some water in the bottom of that. So I'm going to uh, take a turkey baster, get that out of there. And I think I'm going to crank it over a little bit and let the system kind of flush its way out. Let's go look at the fuel filter too. Generally, you'll get some water in there also. Yeah, if you can see on the bottom of that. See the floating, the debris on the bottom of there. That's actually some dirt and it looks like some water. So we have to purge all that system out of there. That fuel line looks beat it's ready to fall off and this one's more of a pain in the ass this is the one that goes back from the underneath around down and up to the tank we'll take a look at the other end of that the other end looks like that we're going to replace it if it's fine and just this end is like that we're going to go cut it back a little so i got uh, that going into a cup i'm just going to take a rag and wrap it around an air gun and i have the gas cap off sorry about that I have the gas cap off and I'm going to put some pressure into the tank and kind of force it through. Let's see what we get for fuel. Ugh. I would say the tank is pretty much empty. So I'm able to blow air right through it, but what is in there is just absolute garbage. That's not good. I'm going to go take a quick peek in the tank, see if it's got a whole bunch of crap or it's almost done doesn't look terrible in there but i do want to take and mop up it, like not all the fuel is out of there still a little bit in there so i want to take this guy shove it in there and run that around and try to absorb whatever i can off the bottom I'll probably come back with a air gun again try to dry it out Again, water is kind of my thing I'm trying to get rid of. So we'll mop that up, take the air gun through it, and probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave that open on the other end. I'll put some more fuel in it and pressurize it again, and we'll try to push that out. There you go. That's decently wet. There's more that way. Which is a little, a little valley that it falls down into. I'll run some more fuel in it, push it through, and we'll run it till we get clean fuel, put a new fuel filter on it, do the lines up. I don't think the carburetor really kind of needs to come apart and get soaked. It doesn't look that bad. Hopefully. All right, so, so I did. Took a few minutes cleaning that out, went back with more air. Looks pretty dry on the inside of it. Put some fresh fuel in it. Let's go push that through the line. Looks pretty good. Took a little bit more contaminants out of it, but I think uh, it should be clean enough to run. Yeah, it's pretty decent. All right, so I'm gonna clean out the carb, fuel line, fuel filter, and we'll put it back together. What I might do is because the fuel pump still i'll hook all that stuff up i'm going to leave the top of the carburetor off we're going to crank it so that it, it flows through some of that stuff and make sure we purge all the garbage out of it now it should come up through that hole right there one more 
right time. Bubble should stop any minute. I want to get the straight fuel. There we go. And the color change. So now I'll clean this up, blow it out. We should be good to go. Well, we should be able to fire it up by key now. It'll take a second for the float bowl to fill up that I know. But I'll have fresh fuel and we run it for a minute. I guess we're going to let it warm up and then we'll change the oil. Let's give it some gas. run for a minute or two and uh, change oil. Sure on that charging system. Should have been higher than that. it's fine. Am I making you dizzy from jumping side to side? That's what this looks like. Unfortunately I didn't have the right size fuel line either so. I would say it needed changing. We got the engine tins all back on it. Oil's in. Should fire right up. I think the choke is on. So that's all pretty squared away. It does need fuel line. Probably should throw a set of plugs in it, but uh, it's not gonna stop it from running right now. Figure we'll jump around a little bit. This is the next thing that was kind of flopping around. It was tucked down in there. I just lifted it up. And straighten that guy out. And I think it just snapped in forward and back. I'm not quite sure what this is. Is that the, was that, was that the neutral safety switch? Let's see if there was any wires. A bolt right there. What's that doing? Got me. Yeah, not quite sure on that. Let's go see. We popped you back in the stand. Let's go straighten up that bent tab first. Okay. Hopefully the trans is okay. We haven't tried that yet. You know, the, the hydros essentially have more of a problem than the uh, the standards, but either one could be screwed up. Oops. 
looks like I could probably put a couple of plastic nuts. Maybe even had it too. Yeah, I'm going to see if we can find some. Uh, those, uh, I think they're called quick nuts. I'm not quite sure the name of them. Let's see if we can get something on that guy and that guy. And that should suck it down and hold it in place. I just popped it off and went over to the hardware drawer. Looks like these uh, should be good enough to hold it. Yeah, shifter cover's done. Let's see, we take a quick look at what we got going on for belts. I don't see any cracks in them. That one's flopping pretty good, but... We'll see how it is when it's tensioned. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> That might be an issue. That blade is a tad bent. You should not be able to see that. So we need a blade. That's more of a rototiller than a blade. How's the other one? The other one looks pretty straight. Again, this, uh, I'm not th that concerned with bringing that this machine back to pristine because it's just not. It's pretty beat, you know. The deck's going to blow out eventually. You can kind of see some rot holes going through it. So it's got a little bit more life in it, but not that much. So I'm not looking to put a bunch of money into it. So let's see what I can find for a blade. Seem to remember over on the parts machine. Not sure if that's the correct blade or not, but there's a blade sitting here. That's the right one. It sure looks better than what's on there, right? Got it half off the machine, half off the ramp, and lifts it back up again. I would say that looks like that. Well, it doesn't look just like it, or else it would be bent, but you get the idea. Let's go change that guy out. And see if we can go for a little test run. Star's not burned out, that's a good sign. A lot of times if it hits something and strips out, it'll egg these out and it'll especially egg these out. Then you need a new spindle. But one of the good things about Craftsman is that stuff is very cheap. The spindles and all the assorted deck rebuilding parts are fairly cheap. Make sure we're not upside down. We are not upside down. at that old one if it was. Let's see, that'll function halfway decent. Yeah, this deck is getting kind of punky. Again, this, this machine maybe has another year or two left in it for cutting. So that's why I'm not buying all new stuff for it. It's just not worth it. It's probably destined to be a romper mower. And don't worry about that noise, that's a brake that's on there. It's not the actual spindle making noise. I'm just looking at this spot here. I want to make sure it matches. I don't know if you guys can see or not. We'll use up here. Make sure that and that are nice and close, and they are. So the spindle's not bent. Yeah, I think we're good under here. All right, seat safety's hooked back up. A little bit more gas in it. And took it off of there. Let's go fire it up and do a function check. See how the trans is and all that.
Everything seems to function okay. Motor deck's actually fairly quiet. The bearings aren't noisy. So that's a good sign. All gears work okay. And uh, I think they'll be able to cut grass for a while. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Uh, we have a bagger assembly we can put on it and we'll see how that works. Uh, everything else seems to be okay. Seat safety works. That's when I, I hopped up on it when we were riding and it shut off and uh, I got back on it and it turned back on when we were cutting the grass in the front. But fuel seems to be all right. Let's get the bagger on. I don't know if to back those bolts off or not. It's got kind of a flip on it. Let's see what it does. That's it. Probably got a pin that goes underneath it. Might even be that bolt that we found. Now it's, it's hanging on to prayer right now. It's not locked all the way in. Smashes on my head right now. Oh, the shoot on. It just needs a slight adjustment. Be able to wrestle with that. Yeah, it's a little dirty, but it's on there. You can hit it with the pressure washer. It all seems complete. That locks on. This strap was busted, but this is a very common one to be broken, so I just ran a bungee across it. The two little ones on the bottom are still there that hold the chute to the uh, bottom of the mower deck. And one thing I was adjusting, you saw me trying to screw with the lever. The lever. The deck was all the way down, but this is your, your height adjustment for the deck. So it was run all the way in. So even when you went to go drop the deck down, it just went in eh, and that was it. The deck was all the way up. And they probably did that because that blade was bent and they weren't realizing why they were scalping the lawn. So if you crank this, you'll notice the more you go, the more that lever drops down. You get more and more height. So that's the adjustment. I say I'm going to go cut my grass and see how the bagger works. That's it guys, so I cut my lawn with it, bagger works fine. Hit it with the pressure washer one more time through the, the uh, intake cover uh, boot back on, put a tie wrap around the battery, it was flapping around. I think we're gonna call it at that. Really not worth putting much more into it. There's more that can be done, but not by me. Bagger seems like it's working fine. So can you tell I did the driveway? <laughs> the dirt. So that, that's fine. Again, it's uh, you know getting a little long in the tooth, but it's still got a little bit more life in it. And uh, what we got into it? Five bucks. We got oil, a fuel filter, and a little bit of fuel. Other than that, the other parts were donated by the other machine. And the tire seems to be uh, holding up with air. It's probably been four or five days since the when I brought it home. So they seem like they're holding. If they, if you got to fill them up once a month or so, it's not bad. You got to fill it up every time you're cutting the grass, though. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. And it's even got a cup holder. So with that, guys, I'm going to go sign off. Hope you uh, enjoyed kind of hanging out, wrenching in the garage, and trying to get some free junk back to life. And uh, we'll do it again soon. So with that, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank all of you for watching. Comment, subscribe if you like. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.